Good morning everyone. Um, I'm here to have a fast revision for your first midterm test 2020. Um, the lesson I have chosen is Biology Chapter 17 Animal Kingdom. So you have only one lesson for your one biology lesson for your uh, first midterm test. So since I have a short uh, span of time, I have selected certain uh, important question answers, and I have dis and I'm going to discuss in this uh, video. So to start with two marks. First question: Define taxonomy. So uh, taxonomy is simply the study of classification. Um, as per the notes, it is the theoretical study of classification. So you have theoretical and practical study, whereas here taxonomy is the theoretical study of classification, which includes basic principles, basic procedures and basic rules. Then second question, why frogs are said to be amphibians? So everyone knows amphibians, animals that live or which can survive both in uh, land as well as water are called as amphibians in that way frog lives both in water as well as land and so they are called as amphibians the larval form of frog is aquatic that is it is called as tadpole larva so this uh, tadpole larva which uh, um, comes out from the egg is uh, full and full aquatic in nature that is it survives only in water it cannot survive in land then third question how are the limbs of the birds adapted for avian life avian life that is to fly okay so actually birds have two pairs of limbs um, for this avian life the four limbs that is the limbs that are found for in the front they are called as four limbs which are modified as wings Whereas the hind limbs are adapted for walking and running. Uh, comment on the aquatic and terrestrial habits of amphibians. So amphibians, as we have discussed in the second question, they can serve both in aquatic, that is water, as well as in terrestrial, that is land. So let us see one by one. So for aquatic life, the skin is moist and glandular. So why it is moist and glandular that is even when the adult frog is inside water it can uh, respire, respire through skin. So that's why the skin is moist and glandular. Um, similarly tadpole larvae they, larva since they are full and full aquatic in nature as we learned in the second answer. Um, respiration takes place through gills like fishes here respiration takes place through gills only tadpole larva have gills not adult frog or other adult amphibians uh, terrestrial habits which includes they have a long hind limbs for jumping and second they respire through lungs so these are the two adaptations for li living in land then four more cancers first question give an account of phylum annelida um, annelida they are metamerically segmented so first of all keep in mind example is earthworm and leech so keeping this in mind you uh, read the points one by one and one more thing 10th standard you are going to learn more about leeches so concentrate and uh, learn properly okay so first point they are a metamer i mean all animals of phylum annelida they are metamerically segmented what is meant by metamerically segmented that is when the organs are repeated in each and every segment or when the organs are found repeatedly in all the each and every segment that then it is called as metamerically segmented okay so that is one special characteristics of phylum annelida and they have a body cavity called coelom okay so true coelom they have a true body cavity called coelom then third they have movable bristles which helps for locomotion and these bristles are called as sitae okay so like how you have uh, thin structures called as bristles in your toothbrush so this uh, sitae will be uh, still smaller than your uh, bristles that is found in your toothbrush 
okay so it helps in locomotion in earthworm and leeches then fourth point the body of annelids are covered with moist cuticle which provides uh, protection so you might have uh, seen earthworm or leech where their body will be always moist and this is covered with the cuticle excretion in these animals is through a special organ known as nephridia okay so this might be asked even in one mark question uh the central nervous system composed of brain so here brain is found then second four mark question distinguish flat worms and round worms so basically flat worms they appear flat like a paper okay so even though they are warm warm like structure that worm will be flat in nature whereas uh, round worms they appear like a thread for example the thread that is used to tie the tie your answer papers so like that they are round in shape whereas uh, flat bombs are flat in shape okay so all flat bombs belong to phylum platyhelminthes whereas round bombs belong to phylum uh, ascalminthes the alimentary canal is absent or sometimes very simple whereas in round bombs the alimentary canal is a straight tube so what is alimentary canal it's none other than the digestive tract okay started from mouth to anus Uh, wherever the food goes through that is actually called as um, alimentary canal in flat worms body is segmented whereas in round worms body is not segmented uh, in flat worms body is covered with cuticle whereas in round worms uh, the body is again covered with cuticle but the cuticle is very thin flat worms they are hermaphrodites that is um, where both male and female sex organs are reproductive organs are found in same organism that is called as hermaphrodite whereas in round worms sexes are separate that is you come across separate male and female worms male worm containing male reproductive organs and female worm containing female reproductive organs so that is also one special characteristics uh, all flat worms are parasites so that is they depend on other uh, some other living organism or some other animal um for their food whereas round worms uh, some are free living and some are parasites okay so free living they don't disturb other animals uh, they feed on dead substances etc whereas uh, parasites as uh, you, you as we learned in flat worms they involve in uh, depending on the uh, other living on so for that they hurt sometimes they kill other animals and then they consume the Uh, consume that animal as food okay so that we call it as parasites then seven mark question so i have selected only one answer okay so describe the characteristic features of different prochordates so this prochordates can be divided into three subphylums as hemichordata cephalochordata and urochordata um so hemichordata example balanoglossus cephalochordata example amphioxus and urochordata example ascidians so in case of hemichordata certain characteristics which include they are marine organisms without backbones example balanoglossus uh, kindly diagram refer your book okay so um hemichordata marine organisms without backbone they are tubicular forms that is they the structure the organism looks like a tube that is called as tubicular forms uh, the body is soft vermiform that is it appears like a worm w o r m worm uh, unsegmented body and bilaterally symmetrical okay uh, they are triploblastic animals that is which consists of ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm so this is about hemichordata then second cephalochordata they are small fish like marine chordates so both are marine hemichordata marine cephalochordata marine okay uh, um, they have unpaired dorsal fins so when you look into this uh, structure of amphioxus you will find fins like how you come across in uh, fishes fins which helps to move or locomote like that you come across uh, comparatively smaller fins and they are unpaired unpaired in the sense you don't have equal pairs so one side you may have a odd number on the other side you have the even number so like that you have 
unpaired dorsal fins uh, the persistent notochord extends forward beyond the brain so here you come across notochord which is almost similar to a vertebral column which uh, extends beyond the brain example amphioxus then third urochord data okay the notochord here is confined to the tail region alone okay um, then the adults are mostly uh, sessile forms urochord data the adults are sessile that is uh, they are they are immobile or i could say they are always fixed to some substratum that is called as sessile forms and mostly they degenerate the body is enveloped by a tunic or test so in urochordata the body is covered with a um, short structure so that is called as tunic or test example ascidian then second five mark question so only two five marks you have so concentrate on both the answers so that it will be easy for you to attend the exams okay exam Uh, the question is give an account on phylum arthropoda so arthropoda the meaning of arthropoda is simply i could say joint legs jointed legs so if you look into the legs of insects you might have noticed maybe cockroach or any other insects you will find the legs uh, appears as if it is jointed to each other okay so that kind of uh, an animals that have uh, this kind of jointed legs they come under arthropoda so which includes all kinds of insects um spiders crabs butterflies scorpions apart from that you have uh, shrimps uh, lobsters so all have a uh, jointed legs so hence everyone comes under this phylum arthropoda okay uh, so actually arthropoda is an ancient and the largest phylum with more number of species this is an important very important characteristics of arthropoda okay so ancient uh, animal so uh, ancient animal the sense uh, once upon a time it uh, evolved and it is the largest phylum with more number of species okay so if you cal- ca- count the number of insects that itself will be more compared to all other living organisms so that's why we call it as largest phylum with no more number of species then the word arthropoda Uh, means joint legs so i said this in the beginning itself the body of arthropoda is divided into head thorax and abdomen okay so we, um, if you look into an insect you will understand it comprises of head thorax that is chest region and the abdomen that is um, where you have stomach so that region is called as abdomen the next point the exoskeleton is made up of chitin okay in all kinds of i mean especially i should not say insects in all the arthropods you come across the an exoskeleton uh, a little hard shell you might have come across in certain bees okay and in most of the insects you will come across this which is made up of a special chemical named as chitin the coelomic cavity is filled with the hemolymph so unlike, unlike uh, us so we have hemoglobin but uh, you, if you look into insects it has hemolymph that is Uh, it does not have a globin okay protein instead it comprises of hemolymph and that gives the insects blood whitish color so sometimes when you accidentally or intentionally crush an insect you will find the white color fluid coming out of it which is none other than hemolymph they do not have a well defined blood vessels so they call this as open circulatory system okay so there are two types of circulatory system in our body where we have arteries veins and capillaries inside which uh, blood runs so hence we come under closed circulatory system but in insects there is no uh, blood vessels and so we call it as open um, circulatory system okay the insects used to shed its exoskeleton by molting okay so that is molting takes place in insects so whenever i mean not only from egg to larva larva to pupa pupa to adult apart from that an adult molds its its skin several times or i would say shreds its skin several times okay so that is the meaning of this point i hope you understand what is by shredding or molding okay 
so it come it uh, re releases the skin like a snake okay i hope now you can understand snakes used to remove its skin like that uh, insects or simply you would say arthropod they undergo molting the respiration is through body surface sometimes it is through gills and sometimes i mean in some in some uh, organisms it is through trachea so it depends excretion is through malpighian tubules in insects and through green glands in crabs and prawns so malpighian tubules and green glands are special organs that are uh, um, that involve in excretion okay like how we have uh, kidneys in humans animals we have kidneys like that in these animals we have malpighian tubules and green glands okay as i said before uh, there are uh, various uh, insects i mean all insects comes under arthropods um so i don't want to go deep into that so which includes spiders crabs butterflies scorpions apart from that we have a uh, um shrimps um pra prawns lobsters uh, millipede and centipede i hope you know what is a millipede and centipede maravatta is millipede and puran is called as centipede so all these comes under arthropods the reason why is they have all these animals have one thing in common that is they have jointed legs okay so with this i end uh, this uh, fast uh, revision for your first midterm exam 2020 so i am i have concentrated only on biology uh, another master will be concentrating on uh, physical science okay uh, to wind up um, so you are in 9th standard i don't want to say this again and again um concentrate on your studies because whatever you learn in 9th standard uh, you you will uh, repeatedly learn more about these topics in 10th standard and higher second uh, whatever subject it is i don't mean only for science it also in place for other subjects like maths tamil english social etc okay so um, whatever you learn you should not uh, forget till your death okay like that you have to learn so make a place um um an isolated place where you are you don't uh, you are, you you should not be disturbed by any uh, technology there like laptops and cell phones instead you should be busy with your learning materials okay so uh, why i am saying this is because isolated places uh, will tend you tempt you to do many wrong uh, um happenings okay so be careful uh it's not like your 6th or 7th you are in 9th standard okay so already have learned about uh, reaching the age of adolescence in 8th standard okay so by this time you should be knowing that this is the right age to uh, gain more knowledge so try to learn uh, uh, whenever when you don't understand certain things uh, if possible ask someone who uh, some elders who, who are at home or uh, google up or uh, yes that's it okay so google will help you in all aspects okay so try to find out the meaning of certain concepts if you don't understand um especially i would say when you google up you see to that uh, you are under parental guidance okay um then uh, with regard to your exam um i hope you know you you already have got your pattern so i don't i don't want to repeat that pattern so uh, write neatly that's what i would say write neatly and legibly uh, even now if you don't have a good handwriting i would say it's not too late okay even now you can take a four lines notebook and write regularly one page slowly so that you will improve your handwriting okay so if it is uh, english you go for a four lines notebook an old four lines notebook uh, and if it is for tamil you, you depend on a two lines notebook okay but uh, this is the right time to improve your handwriting and presentation um so your masters might have uh, been correcting your notebooks so by this time they would have given many comments to improve your handwriting and so and so so keep those in mind keep your class work in mind and based on that you try to uh, present your midterm exam so this is just the beginning of this year okay so Uh, prepare well for your exam and uh, um, write the exam neatly uh, um, i hope you know you should use only an uh, 
um, long size unruled paper so um, there are some who are writing a, even after coming to ninth standard writing a, their class work in small size a ruled notebook okay so it's not fair on their part so keep that in mind um, so you should use a long size unruled paper draw a nice margin okay write your name class and section exam number properly without any mistakes and pray to god and then start your exam okay so um i don't want to take much of your time okay so always pray whatever you need pray to god and also keep in mind uh, don't pray for uh, uh, yourself also pray for others pray for those who are infected pray for those who are at the platform okay so the more you pray the more uh, god will be with you and uh, whatever you do uh, it will be uh, it will be a go good thing and uh, you will be blessed and uh, you will get more achievements in your future all the best god bless you